apartment 208 and old mom in 2013, I moved into an apartment in Alma, Arkansas. I'm not sure if this had anything to do with it, but the apartment complex was right next to a very old graveyard. A little history on this apartment complex. I had lived there three times before in 2003, 2006 and 2009. All three times I got the same one bedroom apartment number 208. It was always the only one bedroom available. Each time I would have strange things happen there, the first time cabinets would open, things would be in different places, and sometimes when I had take a shower and close my eyes, I had see the bathroom and shower covered in blood and blood coming out of shower. I had opened my eyes and it be normal. The first time I lived there that stuff intrigued me, I only moved out to move in with my GF, Alma has very few options for apartments, and in 2006, when my GF and I split up, I had to go back to same apartment complex and lo and behold. The exact same day is split with my GF the people living in 208 moved suddenly, and for the second time I got the same E apartment as first time, it seemed a little weird, but I just wrote it off as a coincidence. This time around things were worse, I had here movement in my walk-in closet and living room at night, the shower visions were more intense, and also this was the year that the laughing children incident happened to me. See my other post for laughing children story, and also I was living here when a sleep paralysis began a few months after the laughing children. My first sleep paralysis episode was terrifying, I was laying asleep next to my new GF, and about 1am I heard the DVD rack in living room fall, and a lot of DVD crashing to the floor. I was still half asleep when I looked towards my bedroom door which I kept shut, and on this night I had accidentally left my bathroom, and I could see the light under my door, but as I turned my head to the direction of the noise, and was about to holler out who's there, I heard running footsteps like a kid, then I saw the shadow of feet at base of my bedroom door in the bathroom light, then I saw the feet shadow go from being on other side of my door to being on my side of the door, no filler shadow just a feet, and in a blink of an eye they moved from door to my chest and disappeared, this all happened so fast I had not been able to move or speak, but after seeing the shadow feet on my chest, I went to shake my gf awake, but I could not move my arms. So I went to say her name, but I could not speak. So in a panic I tried to sit up, but could not move up all my eyes began to get heavy, and in a second I was dreaming of a shadow holding me down coveting my mouth, oh fought and whitened my eyes, and it was still there. I am finally able to make a noise, but it's just a raspy pitiful help that is barely a whisper, and I am able to slightly move my finger and touch my gf, it's enough, and she opens her eyes and asks me what's wrong, I let out my pitiful help again, as I whiten my eyes in fear at my chest. My GF starts shaking me, and when I do not respond she slaps me, in an instant the shadow is gone, and I'm awake able to move, my GF says she never heard the DVDs crashing and did not see the shadow. The DVDs were all still on the rack when I go to check the living room, my GF witnessed and pulled me out of three more sleep paralysis episodes over the next few months before leaving me, because it all freaked her out so bad, and then I moved out, fast forward to 2009. I had married in 2007 and had a son that same year and a daughter in 2009, but my wife and I split, and I needed a place to stay, and once again I go back to the same apartment complex, I could not afford anything better, once again for the third time the only open apartment is 208. But I do not want to be homeless so I ask the landlord if I move into 208 can it be temporary, and if another apartment opens up can he let me take it, he says yes and I move in, but after two weeks of bloody visions, noises and two more sleep paralysis episodes I move out and stay with family. My wife and I get back together, but in 2013 we split for good, and I get split custody and need a local place to live, and because this time I need a two-bedroom apartment and, knowing there is no chance of getting 208 because it's one bedroom, I go back to complex and end up getting 210, which is right next to 208. The even number apartments are on second floor and odd on bottom, 210 was the only available two-bedroom apartment, so I take it and tell myself at least it's not 208, no nothing happens here at first, and my kids and I really make it our home, and then it begins. 
One night I am in my room and it's 2.30 in the morning and I hear my kids banging toys around and giggling in their room and I hear their TV come on and it wakes me up. Irritated I call out, you guys are supposed to be asleep. Fond make me ground you. The banging and giggling stop, but I still hear TV going and I get up and walk to their shut door still half asleep and say, okay kiddos I told you to go back to. As I begin opening their door it occurs to me that my kids are at their mom's, I had taken them back to her the evening before, a chill runs down my body, as I slowly push door open to see toys strewn all over, and a cartoon playing on TV. I turn the light on unplug the TV, then bolt to living room shutting their door behind me, I turn all the lights on in the apartment and sit up on edge all night. Nothing else like this happens, but the next week while my kids were there I had catch my three-year-old daughter talking to somebody when my six-year-old son was not around her, so I asked her who she talked to, and she replied, my friend old mom. Her kids got burned up so she is nice to me because I look like her little girl, my daughter said this word for word, and usually she could not talk that plain, I immediately call her mom and ask what she's been watching over there but her mom says just her cartoons. I once again got a chill down my entire body, my son never saw what Alexis saw. Over the next few months my little girl continues to talk to and about old mom, sometimes even pointing behind me telling me old mom is there watching me to make sure I'm a good daddy, very creepy. Over the past few years my little girl has gotten to like spooky stuff and is fascinated with scary shows and movies, but at this time she was only three and had never seen scary stuff, so I was really getting concerned and had a hard time sleeping. Then one night I was reading a kid's book called The Monster in My Closet to my kids they lay in bed, and I was sitting in a chair next to her bed, at the end of the book is a page that says for the kid reading it to draw the monster in their closet, this gave me an idea. I told my daughter to draw old mom for me, she sits up I give her a pencil in the book, and she says, can you move daddy she's behind you, and I cannot see her, I scoot away a little, and my little girl looks in the direction where I sat before then looks down draws a little, looks up again then draws some more and continues to do this until she finishes, she hands me the picture, I look at it, and I begin to tremble and my heart races, that weekend we moved to an apartment in the next town over. Some might say it was her imagination and she just made up the drawing, but she was three, and I believe if she made it up, she would not have taken her eyes off the paper as she drew, but she kept looking up as she drew, and that tells me she was looking at old mom whole drawing her. You will know why I moved after seeing this drawing. Link to my daughter's drawing of old mom. HTTP colon slash slash imger, com AA16 fe. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video hit that like button to support my work. And as always enjoy the fear my dear.